In this video tutorial, we will talk about the human eye. When you compare diagrams of an eye versus a camera, you'll see a lot of similarities. That's because the camera is modeled after the human eye. Many parts of the camera try to mimic those found in the eye. These are just some of the parts of the eye and their camera equivalents. The cornea is a transparent bulge at the front of the eye. Approximately 70% of the light refraction that occurs in the eye is due to the cornea and it helps to focus the light so you can see more clearly. The lens is behind the cornea, and it converges light from the cornea into a sharper image. Meanwhile, the iris is the colored portion of our eyes. It controls the diameter of the pupil, regulating the amount of light that is allowed in. Now the pupil is just a hole. That's why it's not labeled on the diagram, because there is no physical feature. Light just goes through the pupil. And the iris controls how large this hole is, closing when it's too bright so not too much light goes in, thereby blinding us, and opening wider under dark conditions in order to let in more light rays. Now the retina is found at the back of the eyeball. It is a thin layer of light-sensitive tissue that receives the image and converts it into electrical signals that are then sent along the optic nerve. So when light entering the eye hits the retina, it sends electrical impulses along the optic nerve, which is then sent to the brain, where it's interpreted telling us what we see. Now there are two major types of photoreceptor cells on our retinas. There are rods and there are cones. Rod cells look like rods and they only detect black and white, but they are very sensitive to motion and work very well in low light. They are typically found on the peripheries of our eye, so the sides of our eye. From an evolutionary standpoint, having these rods on the sides of our eyes is a good defense mechanism. A predator that's trying to hunt you is unlikely to come straight on at you. They don't want to be seen. They want to catch you by surprise by coming in from the sides or from behind. Because these rods work well in low light and are sensitive to motion, it is now easier to see a predator that's trying to sneak up on you. Cones, on the other hand, are good at detecting colors. They're able to pick out specific details, but work best in bright conditions. They are typically found in the center of the eye. Since we focus our attention on things that are directly in front of us, this is where the cone cells need to be. Now sometimes these cone cells can malfunction. People with malfunctioning cones are said to be colorblind. Now there are many types of colorblindness, the most common being red-green colorblindness. So those of us with cones that work properly can see the number 74 hidden in this diagram. But if those cones that detect red and green colors are not working properly, we have a hard time distinguishing between them. And so this is a regular traffic light signal. If you have red-green color blindness, this is probably what you would see. There is very little distinction between these three colors. Now, it is a common belief that what you see is really what your eyes see and send to your brain, but that's incorrect. The truth is, most of what you see is actually information that is made up by your brain. To demonstrate this, there is a hole in the retina where the optic nerve enters the eye. So if you recall, the retina is a thin sheet of cells containing rods and cones. When light hits these rods and cones, they send electrical signals to the brain. But the optic nerve is where those signals travel towards the brain. And where the optic nerve connects to the retina, there are no rods and cones present. So any light rays that hit this area go undetected. This is called your blind spot. Now normally your eyes are set apart in such a manner so as to compensate and cover for each other. So light that hits your blind spot in one eye won't hit your blind spot in the other eye. So your brain can use those two images and overlap them to cover up the blind spot. In situations where one eye cannot help out the other eye, your brain can also fill in. They can Photoshop out the blind spot for you. Let's try it out. Cover your left eye. When you do so, your left eye can no longer help out your right eye with the blind spot. Now what I want you to do is stare only at this plus sign. Do not look anywhere else. Look only at this plus sign. Now slowly move your head towards the screen, but only look at the plus sign. At some point, this yellow circle will disappear. You looked at the yellow circle. Stop looking at the yellow circle. Look only at the plus sign. All right? So slowly move your head towards the screen and you will see that that yellow dot that you're not supposed to look at will disappear. It will have been replaced 
it will have been photoshopped by your brain and replaced with a red circle instead. All right, so what's happening is this. Without your left eye to help out the right eye, the light rays from this yellow circle, they land on the optic nerve of your right eye. Since there's no light being detected by your brain coming from this area, your brain looks at the surroundings and decides what to fill it in with by looking at the pattern. Since it sees red dots all around it, it assumes there must be a red dot here, and so replaces this empty gap with a red circle. Now, if you didn't see it the first time, try it out again. Rewind this video. Uh, the key is to keep your head far away from the screen first. Look only with your right eye, then slowly come in. Must be very slowly. And eventually, when you're about 30 centimeters away from the screen, in and around that range, depending on how nearsighted or farsighted you are, but in and around that area, 30 centimeters away from the screen, this yellow dot will disappear to be replaced with a red dot instead. Let's take a look at this next illusion. For this one, keep your eyes only on this plus sign. Don't look to the left, don't look to the right, only look at this plus sign. In a few moments, I'm going to change this picture to another celebrity, and I'm going to change this picture to another celebrity. Every second, another photo of a different celebrity will pop up on both sides. Because your attention is focused here, your brain will be unable to pick up specific details over here or over here. And so your brain will fill in the missing details based on what it knows, based on your past experience. But if these pictures change too quickly, your brain's photoshopping capabilities are unable to keep up. And as long as your eyes remain focused here, its photoshopping capabilities get crappier and crappier and crappier. Eventually your brain will just say, yeah, I think there's eyes here, I think there's a nose here, I think there's a mouth here. And these photos will be noticeably messed up, like weird anime characters with extreme facial features. All right, but enough talk, let's try it out, so keep your eyes on this plus sign. messed up. Now if you don't trust me, rewind the video and focus on just one side. You will see that the faces are actually quite normal. Nothing like the warped images that your brain photoshopped in. Alright, let's continue on. Eye accommodations. So eye muscles, called ciliary muscles, help the eye to focus on distant and nearby objects by slightly changing the shape of the lens. So here we have the ciliary muscles and they're attached to the lens. When they contract, so when they pull, they make the lens thinner. By making the lens thinner, you are able to focus on distant objects. All right? It allows you to refract the light differently so that when the image hits your retina, you can focus on far away objects. Their images will appear sharp. And when these ciliary muscles relax, the lens becomes thicker. And of course, that allows the refraction to occur so that you can focus on nearby objects. Sadly, as we age, our ciliary muscles become weaker and our lenses are no longer as elastic as they once were. This makes it difficult for us to focus on nearby objects. They will appear blurry. This is called presbyopia. So when you can no longer make that lens thin, the refraction ends up with the focused area behind the retina. But by the time the light hits the retina, it's unfocused. Hyperopia, also known as farsightedness, means you have no difficulty seeing things that are far away, but it is difficult to focus on nearby objects. So with normal vision, a nearby object would be refracted in a way so that the nice sharp image ends up on your retina. But like presbyopia, hyperopia does not allow you to focus the image properly. The focused image ends up behind the retina where it's too late. So hyperopia is usually caused by an eyeball that is either too short, so if your eyeball was a little longer, the focused image would lie on your retina. But hyperopia can also be caused by a cornea or lens that may not refract light enough, so it's a weak lens or a weak cornea, and so it doesn't refract it enough to cause it to focus on the retina itself. To fix this, you need a converging lens, either a, a contact lens or glasses, and what will happen is the converging lens focuses even more so that by the time it reaches your eyeball, now your eyeball can do the rest of the focusing 
and giving you a nice sharp image that lies on your retina. All right, so converging lens is used to fix hyperopia, farsightedness. With myopia, it's the exact opposite. It's called nearsightedness. In this case, you have no problem seeing nearby objects, but faraway objects are going to be blurry. So while hyperopia had the image projected behind the retina, myopia projects the image in front of the retina. And so by the time it hits the retina, it's too late. The image is out of focus. Now causes of myopia, maybe your eyeball is too long. If it was a little shorter, the retina would be right here and you would see the focused image. Another cause may be a cornea or a lens that is too strong and it refracts the light way too much. To fix this, you would need a diverging lens. So the light rays get spread out a lot more. So by the time it hits your really powerful lens, it converges it right where it needs to be. All right, and that's all you need to know about the eye. We are now done the optics unit.